I will turn to uh, the journalists, and uh, the first I have on my list is Hugh Pym from BBC News. Thank you, Secretary of State. Uh, first of all, one, one for you. How can the Prime Minister continue to lead the country when one of his most senior MPs in the Commons has called on him to resign? And one for Dr Hopkins. Cases have risen rapidly fuelled by Omicron. Do you expect them to continue falling quite quickly? So uh, thank you, Hugh. I was with the Prime Minister uh, today in Parliament when he, he set out uh, our response uh, to, to COVID and there was a huge amount of support for, for what he set out and anyone could, I think, see that whether you're in Parliament or, or watching. And, uh, and obviously the, the, what we've seen in the, in the last few weeks and what we've been seeing, whether it's in our newspapers, on the BBC or elsewhere, it's caused a, a lot of pain and anger. And I, of course, uh, like anyone else, I, I absolutely understand that and the, the prime minister has rightly he's come to parliament he's apologized and uh, he has uh, asked for the time and space uh, for the investigation that's taking place to be completed so the facts can be established and then he will come back to parliament and answer any questions and be happily scrutinized on all those facts once they're established Thank you. On the cases falling, so we've seen cases fall now for the last two weeks, uh, and that is good news, and, and actually they're starting to fall all across the country in all regions. There is, of course, some age differences. So some age groups are seeing plateaus or some still slight rises. And therefore, while we believe that overall we will continue to see declines in cases, that may plateau at some points as the infection is in various different populations. Um, it's very hard to see beyond two to three weeks, and clearly the biggest change that's going to happen is people's behaviour. Uh, and people's behaviour and how they react to uh, the removal of Plan B will determine how fast infection can spread in the population. The biggest response that we all have as individuals is to take our personal behaviour seriously, and that really is driving towards in in vaccination uptake, as well as remembering to wear face coverings when you're in enclosed spaces uh, with people that you don't know. Thank you. Next, I have Tom from Sky, please. Thank you, Secretary of State. Um, what is the public health justification for ending the requirement to self uh, to self isolate if infected? And if the government does bring that forward, is it prepared to do so against the guidance of the WHO during a global pandemic? And given the suggestion that today's announcements have only been made given the political difficulty the Prime Minister finds himself in. Do you as Health Secretary offer him your unqualified support or are you, like Rishi Sunak, going to reserve judgment ahead of the Grey Report? And can you hand on heart say that you've never bent the rules? OK, well, let me start in, uh, on that. I mean, first you asked about the self-isolation rules, ending the self-isolation rules if you're positive. Of course, that is uh, still a requirement. Uh, that It is something that, as I've said a, a moment ago, the Prime Minister has referred to today, we will review. So there's no decision on that at this point. But it is clear that despite the, the changes that we're announcing today, there is still a very high rate of prevalence, some I think, around 1 in 20, according to the latest ONS uh, data. And it is important currently to, to keep those rules in place. We will, of course, review them. Uh, I, I don't want to presume the outcome of that review, but it is reasonable to think, uh, just as uh, we're living with flu, for example, we don't require people to legally self-isolate, but to remain cautious, to be sensible. If they're infected, uh, we will uh, eventually have to find a way to live with COVID in a similar fashion. On, on your question about the, the Prime Minister, I, I fully support the Prime Minister. And, and as I said a, a moment ago, it's, it's important to me and to the country that he's come to the House, he's apologised. And uh, I think it's right that we're waiting for the outcome of, of the report. And uh, when that is complete, this uh, investigation establishes the facts, then the Prime Minister will come back and answer further questions. And I think you asked me about me and rules, whether I have observed the rules, if I heard you correctly. And, uh, you know, I, I can say, I've, I, I, with full confidence, I've absolutely observed uh, the COVID-19 rules at all times. And I would say, you know, like millions of people across the country, it hasn't been easy. 
you know, like like millions. I my mum lives alone. I couldn't go and see her. Uh, I couldn't go to a, a close friend's uh, funeral. Um, it wasn't easy, but it was the right thing to do, as as millions have done up and down the country when they were asked to. And uh, it's it's important also that that if we look at today's announcement that. You know, because millions and millions have observed the rules, they've done the right thing, that we can take the measures that we're taking today and remove these restrictions on our freedoms, which should always be a, a last resort. So I'm, I'm proud of the British people and what they've allowed us to achieve in our fight against this horrid virus. Susan, did you want to say anything on the self-isolation rules as well? Well, I, I mean, I would just add that it, it, for the vast majority of conditions, either self-isolation as cases or self-isolation as contacts of cases isn't a legal requirement, but we give solid public health advice and people follow that. Um, even now, people are, are as cases, uh, within the rules, they are able to do um, take testing to leave early. And as contacts, if you're vaccinated, you're able to leave every day um, having done a daily lateral flow test. So I think it is just one element of the restrictions. I think if we removed all elements on cases and contacts right now at this moment in the pandemic, that would be different. But a legal requirement is only one component of it. Thank you, Tom. I mean, it should uh, remain in place for the time being, though, or, you know, bringing it forward. The, the Prime Minister hinted to bring it forward earlier in March, yet we still have cases, the highest levels of infections we've ever seen from COVID in the UK. Well, t Tom, just to say that that review is, is, is something that we will do. But at this point in time, those uh, requirements, the need to self-isolate if you're positive, remain very important. May I next turn to Emily from ITV, please? Thank you, Secretary of State. Um, I wondered whether you are personally frustrated that you are constantly having to defend the Prime Minister's actions while at the same time having to deliver very important public health advice. And also, uh, if I may, just to follow on from Tom's question, is what you're saying today that by the end of March we will effectively be living with no restrictions in place whatsoever? Thank you, Emily. The and again, when it comes to the, the you know, what has happened in number ten, um, uh, the, the the photos and videos and things that we've all seen, and we've all understandably, uh, I think all of us have been pained by that, angered by that. It is right for the Prime Minister to respond, and he has uh, responded in in Parliament, and he will come back to Parliament once the uh, investigation is complete. And I, and I think that is the is the right approach. Um, in terms of the, um, the, what happens at the end of March, uh, I, I think, first of all, we can reflect on the last eight weeks. That's, that's what it's been. I know it probably feels like longer with Omicron. It's been eight weeks. As I said, that accounts for uh, a third of all the COVID-19 infections we've seen thus far throughout this pandemic. And, and if we look back at that, I do think we've got all the big decisions right. We didn't get, throughout this pandemic, we haven't got every single decision right, the, all the small ones, but we got the big decisions right. And that's ultimately what matters. And that's why we're able to take these steps today and be the freest country in Europe. Now, there still are some requirements, restrictions in place, such as the, the need to self-isolate if you're positive. There's some travel uh, requirements still on, on LFD testing. And it is right that we review those and I will come back in the spring and set out how we will live with COVID. But the, the way we are going to do this is that we are going to have to find a way uh, to remove almost all of these restrictions and, and get life completely back to normal, but with one or two the really big things that I think that will be there for a while. That is probably the need to vaccinate. I can't tell you how often that will be, but I think vaccinations will remain hugely important, just as we have to have annual vaccinations, certainly for older people against flu. And I think antivirals and treatments will continue to play a big role, especially for those that might be more exposed. And I think testing, it, it's great where we are today with testing. I think it will improve over time. And these pharmaceutical defenses of of um, the, the, the vaccines, uh, antivirals, monoclonal antibodies, and testing, I think they will be the cornerstone of our future defenses. 
Thank you, Emily. I'll next uh, move to David, please, from PA. Uh, Health Secretary, the latest recorded uh, daily deaths figure is 359. You're now lifting restrictions. Is this the kind of daily death toll you think the country has to be comfortable with as part of the shift to living with COVID? Um, and after the events of the few, past few days, the prime, do you think the Prime Minister is living on borrowed time? Uh, and will you be throwing your hat into the ring in the leadership contest again? Uh, and to Dr Hopkins, is the UK HSA completely comfortable with the measures that were announced today? And has any assessment been made of what they will do to cases, uh, removing the legal requirements on face masks and the end of the work from home guidance? Good. Uh, th thank you for your question. Look, first on, on the daily uh, death toll. Uh, it is uh, throughout this pandemic some over 150,000 uh, deaths uh, that we've seen. People across the country have lost their friends, their their loved ones, and of course, you know, no one wants to see anything uh, uh, like that. And it's happened uh, across the world. Uh, thankfully, we're in a place today because of the vaccines, primarily that that the, uh, the the death rate has has fallen dramatically. And as Susan had said earlier, and shown with her with the with the data uh, with Omicron in particular, the number of people in intensive care is is a, a, a even lower now than it was um, before uh, Omicron came along. And, and that's important. Uh, but again, we can't stress enough how important it is to get vaccinated because that's the way uh, to, to, to keep deaths low. Uh, you mentioned uh, the number of uh, people dying, uh, the, 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 and you mentioned the, the latest number. Um, the numbers do vary day by day. There are some reporting differences on, uh, depending on which day of the week that is picked. But if you look at the average uh, daily uh, uh, death rate, the seven-day uh, average, I think it's around 200 in, in England, which is a lot, lot lower than it's been before, and we want it to get lower. Uh, and there's something else I think is important to point out about the death rate, which maybe Susan might expand on when, when, when I come to her. It is uh, also with Omicron, we know that if we look at infections uh, of people with COVID in hospital, we estimate around 40% of the people with COVID in hospital uh, are, are, are there uh, not because they've got COVID, they happen to have COVID. So it's a, what you might call an incidental infection. So they're not there being treated for COVID. And that's almost double the percentage that we saw with Delta. And that's important because the deaths that are being reported of uh, of people uh, that ha that were covid positive within 28 days of of uh, passing away uh, that many of those people uh, would not have necessarily died of covid and what we're seeing in hospitals uh, that proportion of roughly 40 percent not being there because of covid is an indicator of that what susan might expand on is that uh, the ons has has very detailed data on that which i think they'll come out with shortly where they look at the actual cause of death on death certificates and i think that will be important data when it comes uh your second question oh yeah you asked about leadership well look we we have a leader we have a, a prime minister the prime minister is uh, is is busy delivering for this country he's delivered on brexit he's delivered on jobs he's delivering on fighting this pandemic and uh, i've got a job and that's a very important job and that's uh, health and social care my job is to make sure that health and social care is the very best it can be in this great country susan Right. So just I'll, I'll take it in two parts. So first of all, on the deaths within 28 days, we regard this as a leading indicator and something we monitor very carefully. But as the Secretary of State has said, it does, doesn't take into account people who've died with COVID, who've had a diagnosis. And given the very large number of cases that we've diagnosed in the last number of weeks, we will sadly see some people, particularly the very elderly, who die within 28 days of, of a case of COVID. So we look very carefully at the ONS data and ONS data release their data weekly. However, in the, in the last two weeks, it's always lagged because uh, the death registrations need to come through. Uh, and we will continue to keep an, a monitoring on the number of deaths that we're saw, seeing within 28 days and the number of deaths that ONS are reporting that are on the death certificate. So therefore related to the death in some way. Uh, and if we see those diverge, we will discuss it further and highlight the reasons for that. On the second part, which is the components of uh, face coverings and working from home. So I, I think what we've seen is that case numbers have declined. 
Uh, it's people's behaviour that are going to make the difference over the next four weeks on whether those case numbers continue to decline, stay the same or rise. Uh, clearly, when you're working from home, you have less social contact, but we're already seeing some people start to go back into the office and mix and socialise more. They need to do that carefully and within the guidelines, um, taking care, particularly when they're on public transport in indoor spaces and crowded places, to wear face coverings, to test regularly if they're going back out and meeting people, particularly those who are more vulnerable. And finally, to ensure that they've taken up that vaccination offer. Because at the end of the day, the more people who are vaccinated, the less likely we will see large transmission, especially in those individuals who've had a booster dose. Thank you, Susan. Next, uh, Jane, please, from the eye. Thank you. Um, to the Health Secretary, can you rule out a return of Plan B if another variant of concern emerges? And also the Prime Minister said today that the government has got the big things on COVID right, and I think you've echoed that, including not introducing tougher measures in England over Christmas in response to Omicron. But the Prime Minister just got lucky, didn't he? Boris Johnson wanted to introduce tougher measures before Christmas, but he was blocked by the Cabinet and the Tory party before Christmas. How can he portray this as strong leadership when he was left with no choice? And if I could also ask Dr Hopkins, what is the scientific evidence and your assessment for scrapping self-isolation in March or even earlier, as the Prime Minister has suggested today? Thank you. Thank you for the question. First of all, in, in terms of um, you know, looking ahead, as I, as I said a, a moment ago, this pandemic is still with us. It's not the end of the road. There will be bumps on the road ahead. None of us know what these bumps are going to be. There will be future variants. Uh, there are many variants uh, between Delta and Omicron, but many of them, they weren't that dangerous and uh, uh, that much of concern. But then suddenly Omicron comes along and, and, and then we all know what happened. So we have to remain vigilant for uh, 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 um, against future variants and also learn from what we've done. And what we have learned, and I think especially over the last uh, couple of months, is that our pharmaceutical defences really do work. You know, the, the, the vaccines, uh, especially the boosters, the, the, uh, the testing, the mass testing, uh, the, uh, and the, the folks on antivirals and other treatments, and also how the British people respond. Because when, we, when Omicron came about and we were very open about it and the risks, the British people responded fantastically. You in such a responsible way, taking tests if they were meeting you know, perhaps elderly people or, or um, uh, going to a high risk place, you know, getting vaccinated in their millions, the most boosted country in Europe. So this, I think these are the kind of measures as we, as we look ahead. And then to your second point uh, that uh, I think you, you said something like uh, did the did the prime minister just sort of get lucky you know, of course not the prime minister has shown leadership uh, throughout uh, but it, w when we think about uh, the emergence of omicron and what happened of course you know, as ministers we receive lots of advice not just on on the public health risk which is hugely important advice uh, we get advice on uh, uh, what might be the impact of certain measures on the economy on um, uh, on, on education on um, other health issues, mental health, your know, cancer outcomes, these are all vitally important. And what the Prime Minister has to do, and only he can do as the head of the government, is to balance all those up and come to a judgment. And that's exactly what the Prime Minister did. And, and, and the central decision uh, that, that, that he made, which was to absolutely focus on boosters, has been vindicated. And when you look back at those charts that Susan shared earlier, if you look at uh, the booster rate in the UK, not just versus Europe, but even countries like Israel that started before us, when you look at that, that is the main reason we are where we are today, because the, the Prime Minister made his decisions, the country uh, responded in their millions, and it's left us where we are today, opening up the country, of course, remaining cautious and vigilant, but we can take uh, the measures that we've taken today. Susan. Um, so I think uh, calling it scrapping self-isolation is a bit simple. Uh, what we have done over time is look at the evidence. Uh, we now re reduce the isolation period for people who are cases um, from what was 10 days down to uh, potentially just five days if you have two negative lateral flow tests. So that's almost half 
for many people. Uh, in addition, for those pe people who are contacts, um, if you're vaccinated, you can do daily LFDs and not need to self-isolate already. Uh, and so that is the vast majority of the country, as uh, you know, the vast majority of the adult population have had two doses and therefore meet that. For other individuals, we still ask them to self-isolate and we'll continue to look at that and look at alternatives and review the scientific evidence. And we will continue to monitor the impact of this virus in the population. And I do come back to the fact that for other diseases, we recommend to people how long they isolate for, for when they've got symptoms. And we recommend to contacts how long they isolate for if they're, a, if they're a close contact. But we also use other things such as treatments and prophylaxis to prevent disease. And as we move through this pandemic, we will develop new tools like we've developed lateral flow to allow us to change uh, the approach and to use science to inform uh, government policy. Thank you, Susan. And then finally to Yasmin at the Financial Times. Thank you. I just have a couple of questions for the health secretary. Given the ongoing anger over parties of in Downing Street and Whitehall, what's your response to those watching from home who would argue that the government's really lost all credibility when it comes to leading the nation through these final stages of the pandemic? And secondly, just to follow up on David's question about impact assessments, in Prime Minister's questions today, Labour called on the government to publish the scientific evidence supporting the PM's decision to move to Plan A. Do you plan on doing that? And will you be publishing some form of impact assessment on the lifting of restrictions, say, for example, on the health service? And finally, are you able to provide any update as to when the government will be changing the definition of fully vaccinated to having two jabs and one booster? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Yasmin. You're, you're, look, you're absolutely right uh, to, to point to the public anger, how pained people have been through uh, what they've seen and, and, and learned, whether through through you know, media publications, through TV, uh, around um, the, you know, parties and all of that. And, and you know, I, everyone's been angered by it. You know, I've been angered by it. I'm pained by it. You are, I'm sure. And, uh, and that is perfectly understandable. And it is, it is right that the, the Prime Minister has, has come to Parliament. He's accepted already that there's been mistakes uh, but he has asked for a proper, thorough investigation to be done to establish the facts, and then he will respond to that. He will properly respond to that to Parliament and to the British people uh, as he should, and as he said he would, and 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 that is going to be an important moment. And and the British people, once they've seen the outcome of the investigation, they've heard the Prime Minister's response, then they can make an ultimate judgment for themselves as they should. You know, it's their country. You know, they vote in a government and decide you know, what should should happen. It, it, it is their right that they get the full facts and decide uh, for themselves. But I absolutely uh, understand uh, the anger and, and the pain. And in terms of um, the second part of your question, the, uh, the evidence around the decisions we've made, uh, that uh, you know, throughout the pandemic, uh, we've been sharing uh, evidence through, the, through Parliament and, 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 and through on the website, for example, of the UKHSA and in other ways. And we will continue to do that, be open and transparent. And, and there'll be many impact assessments that we've published uh, with respect to the pandemic. And we always keep that under review and we're as transparent uh, as, as, as we can be. That's, that's really very important. And uh, having you know, sessions like this, where, where it's members of the public or people like yourself, Yasmin, can ask us questions. Anything you want is part of that uh, transparency. And then in, in, in answer to your final part of your question, uh, we are looking at the definition of uh, fully vaccinated. Uh, it is something that if we just look at what we've learned in the last few weeks, we know that two vaccines are not enough against uh, Omicron. They're nowhere near enough. Uh, they just don't work in terms of protecting you, certainly from hospitalization. But we know that three vaccines uh, that uh, they can uh, give you, uh, I think, is it, Susan, 88% protection, 88% protection against hospitalization. And, and so they work. And that's why we are where we are today. That's why we've made uh, this progress. And it's right that we keep reviewing and updating uh, the definition of fully vaccination, but we've got to think about how that would work in practical terms. So we are looking at that. And if I may, since it's <laughs> the final question, it allows me just to finally say, please, uh, to anyone listening, if you're eligible and you're not boosted yet, please, please, 
do come forward and help yourself, your loved ones, and most of all, help our great country. Thank you. Thank you all very much.